Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. I am continuing with the prophecies on the Master's Voice, the revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ as they have been given to me over a 10-year period. Um, the Lord first spoke to me in 2012, not that he had not been speaking to me before, but prior to that time, God was teaching me, training me, preparing me, and speaking to me on a more personal level. But in 2012, I was in the process of prayer for something very, very crucial to my life, very important. I was praying and I was asking the Lord to make a way and the Lord began to speak and say, these are the last days. You know, I'm hearing the voice of the Lord as I'm praying, but because I'm in the heat of prayer, the pressure of prayer, hearing an answer coming saying, these are the last days. Well, obviously it doesn't line up with what Celestial was praying about. So I heard God, but I kept praying. And he said again, these are the last days. And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm registering this. I will certainly write it down in my journal. These are the last days. And I'm praying and praying. And he says, these are the last of the last days. After these, there shall be no more days. And I've mentioned this in other videos before that this was definitely the on the record, everything came to a stop, a halt, a pause. And I was like, which last days is this? Book of Revelation, last days? Prophet Daniel, last days? Last days, last days? And the Lord began to tell me, these are the final times. And that, that announcement, when it filtered through what the Lord was saying, it definitely threw my life into a spin. It was a process after that for me to understand that God was speaking of a time period and an era, so to speak, that we know definitively as the last days. So one of the things that I always advise viewers when you come here, you, you obviously have to get your ducks lined up in a row because there's a lot of Christians in this world. They're looking for a lot of content. And I have to tell you right off the bat, especially since I'm rounding up these things, I'm finishing them after three years. I have been running this blog for the Lord since May 2019. So that's more than three years in print. That's three and a half years and past two years in video. The video have always been a support. The Lord only told me to start a video channel to support the blog. And he said, use the tools of your generation to get more people to hear these messages because like it or not, a lot of people don't like to read these days. They prefer to consume audio content, video content, Myself, I am a reader and I always strongly encourage people that even if you watch a video, go back to the blog, look under every video, you will find not only the link, which is the written prophecy here of the video you're watching in the description box, you will find many other links that are related to the prophecy you just watched. And it's important because when you read stuff, there's teaching in these prophecies, there's all the breaking open of the scriptures that I can't do unless the video would be like a three hour long video. And so these things, they build up your faith. So a lot of people on the internet now, as the Bible says, you know, in the last days, knowledge will increase and many will run to and fro. People are running here and there and peculiar thing. They want to be comforted. That's right. The grown adults of the end days, the generation that will live to see the Nephilim walking on the earth with their 10 or 25 toes, as the case may be, this generation is seeking comfort. This generation is seeking encouragement, empowerment, and to be told that it's time for their best life now. It's certainly time for something, but it is time to wake up sleepers. It is time to become intimate with Jesus again. It is time to have a sober look, many Christians, at the type of life that you live. It is time to ask yourself, how deep does your discernment and your obedience go? Many Christians are not obedient. They fancy themselves to be people who obey God, and then you will see them having discussions in the various Christian forums, something will be said, and then they will say, you know, God has been talking to me about that. Here is a clue. When the Lord speaks to you once and you do not get active doing what he said, you have not perfected obedience. 
Abraham was not known to be a man who was told the day before, take your son to this mountain and sacrifice him. And then Abraham went to the online Stone Age chat group and said, you know, I heard a voice speaking about sacrificing Isaac and I'm, I'm working through it. He's been dealing with me like that. Those people in the Old Testament were so obedient. And I always say that's because they were high stakes in those days. Disobeying meant being dropped into the middle of the sea as the protagonist of today's prophecy found out, Pharaoh found out what happens when you harden your neck against God. People in the Old Testament are a sterling example of the kind of thing that pleases God, which is that as long as you can perceive the voice of God, many people don't even have the luxury of knowing what God sounds like. You hear God speaking to you. God puts something on your heart. God communicates something that is clear as salt in a dream. You wake up and your response is to say, what was that about? And then to spend the next two months working through it with the Holy Spirit. You're not perfected in obedience. A lot of Christians, you are still on the fence and you do not understand that the fence is about to go electric. That's right. Right now, the fence just looks like your ordinary cement fence or your ordinary plastic fence. The fence is about to go electric. And if you are a Christian leaning on the fence, trying to touch the fence out of curiosity, um, Anunnaki followers out there, who believe that we are just energy in the body waiting to be released into a higher consciousness and still mixing Jesus into that as your guru, the fence is about to go electric. Obedience is about to become that spiritual gift that a lot of people wish they had. When God speaks that voice, trust me, it is not a cheap voice. God does not speak cheaply. And true Christians who know that they have had to press into prayer many nights before God finally said something to them and gave them the answer that they were seeking. This is a precious voice. The voice of God is refined silver, silver refined seven times in a furnace of earth. It is more precious than an inheritance of millions. To think that that voice comes to today's Christians, to think that the Holy Spirit stirs the hearts of today's Christians and the best they can do is, I've been feeling like God is telling me this. And you, you check the, the obedience afterwards, not a single step is taken. Abraham woke up, he went to no Stone Age chat group, he slept, he woke up, he was so obedient that he did not even want to cause his wife the agony of having a husband and wife chat about why he was going to sacrifice his son. He slept that night, woke up, and was found early morning making his way to that mountain to give God back what God had given him. Modern Christians, you have a ways to go, a ways to go, and obedience will be a very costly test if I'm honest, a lot of people are not going to pass it. You don't use the good years now. And when I say good years, I'm not responding to that prophecy. The good years are the years when fire, hail, brimstone, and locusts are not falling from the sky. Every day that you wake up and life is basically normal and no harm has come to your door, like Psalm 91 says, that is a day in a good year. You do not sharpen your discernment, sharpen your obedience. The Lord tells you to do something. It's yes, Lord, you're on the internet looking for whatever it, you need to complete that task, that project, that act, that new direction. He's telling you to shift in. You want to work it out first. You want it to make sense to you. You need to talk to your mother, grandmother, best friend, and your female support group before you can obey. You are out in the wind already, and you need to come away from the fences. This is the master's voice. And the prophecy for today is the plagues of Egypt, January 19, 2022. I love the way that the Lord comes in with these very heavy messages at the beginning of the year. Very, very important things he brought. And this prophecy was so weighty. I consider it very precious. It's not bringing anything positive, but then look at where you are. I consider it very precious because these are God's private things. So when he's showing me prophecy, I always take it with so much 
respect, even when some things are very painful to see, very difficult to process. This is a look into God's privacy, God's future. He doesn't owe us anything. We are in a culture where we really think that asking somebody a question means they owe us an answer. It's a very curious mindset. God doesn't have to tell us anything. The Bible should be enough. To be fair, all the prophecies are there. But because he knows that the Bible can be quite obscure, using only one sentence to describe an entire horrifying time period, he is kind enough to come now in these last days to break this stuff up to morsels that we can absorb. So the Lord was talking to me on a day that I was reading a book. I was reading a book once again. I like to read after dinner. So I was reading a book and I stopped to think about what I was reading, which is good because people put a lot of trash in books. And then before you know it, that trash becomes a part of you. So I was thinking about something that I was reading and the Lord said, my plagues will be seen in the earth again. All of this will return. And by this, men will know that I am God. Such an emphatic statement. Amazing. And I thought, wow, that's God. And then I went back to reading the book, but then he said the exact same thing. My plagues will be seen in the earth again. All of them will return. And by this, men will know that I am God. So obviously I put the book aside, took my laptop and I started listening. And this is what the Lord said, written down for us to hear. There will be the plagues of Egypt in these end times, seen here in America and around the world. The 10 plagues of Egypt will be experienced once more by this present generation. For the overflow of the wickedness of the nations, I will visit them with the same devastating plagues that once brought a proud kingdom to its knees. So you have to know that in those days, Egypt was one of the most glorious empires that was there in terms of advancements, in terms of their agricultural methods, in terms of their warfare tactics, in terms of their education, these people were light years ahead of everybody else. And no wonder, because the Nephilim were helping them with everything at a certain point. And so the Lord said, I will give them blood to drink because they love blood and have spilled blood because they love war and ritual murder. Therefore, they will have blood to drink. No nation is clean. They all spill blood, shed blood, and destroy. They leave little bloody footprints in the sand before me, and the earth is now soaked with the blood of her victims, and their voices are calling out to me from the ground. The nations are defiled with blood. Therefore, I will take away my fresh water and give them blood to drink. The rivers and the wells, even the dams and the seas shall turn to blood bloody water. I will pour my anger and judgment against mankind on the fresh and the salt water sources, and they shall have blood to drink. And the scripture in Revelation 16 is this, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, you are righteous, O Lord, which are and was and shall be, because you have judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Revelation 16, 4 to 6. So what God is saying is that all the nations are complicit to shed blood. All the nations have gone to war. All the nations have exterminated either their citizens or they have exterminated the citizens of people next door or they've gotten on drones and flown all the way to the Middle East and wiped out a ton of people for reasons that they said were real. And as a result of that, God says that there is blood in the earth and there's business to be settled. Victims are calling out for justice Evil has risen to its breaking point. And God says that therefore the 10 plagues are coming to prove his godhood, to prove that he is God alone. They are coming to judge the world for sin. So this is what a channel like this is for. I'm not here to cheer people and to preach rah-rah Christianity. I am here to challenge the listeners that come here to say, 
How genuine is your faith? You cannot be a name only Christian in a climate where judgment is being released right, left, center, front and back. And then think that having a shallow Christianity is enough to manage the deeper and deeper waters that are on the way. The nations are about to be punished for their sins and God is going biblical with good reason in the types of judgments that he is saying. So the first prophecy that I gave, I think it was called, and the angel sounded, that has been uploaded and it was just focusing in on the fact that God says the water will go bloody. So to those who don't believe it now, when it's bloody later, you will be the last ones to come on board. But the Lord is saying that the full 10 plagues of Egypt will, will be seen in our generation. All of them will happen. Now, this may not necessarily mean that they will all happen to one country. He says that they will all be seen. Locusts, flies, and frogs, not a single one will be left out. One country may therefore experience the frogs. Another country may experience the locusts. Another country may have the bloody hail. Because of technology, social media, mainstream news, we will be able to see what he is saying fulfilled that the 10 will be again, meaning they once were, and they were on one unfortunate victim, Egypt, but they will be again seen in the earth, as he's saying. Now, before I started this prophecy, that what the Lord focused on is Isaiah chapter 13. And he said to me, Celestial, make sure you tell them that this earth will go dark. Make sure you tell them that Light will be taken from the earth and the whole earth will be plunged into darkness and tell them that it will be a living and a terrible darkness. There is a dream on the master's voice that I think I made the video for it in 2021. It is called the silver mist. Long story short, the sky, which is made of a very hard glass like casing, like baked crystal, it cracked and a living evil a sentient living moving evil came in through the world through that crack it oozed in and it looked like a combination of mist liquid and mercury mixed together and it was a very brilliant silver when it first began to leak into the world but then after it had killed a ton of people, after that thing had taken many souls, it became black. And in that dream, each person had a room. And I've always said that when I dream and God shows me a great mass of people, but each person has a room, that's your little world. That's your little kingdom, so to speak. That is just representative of your life. And I had been on the plane and I had seen the sky tearing itself apart and that thing coming in. And then I did what all wise people do, which is to split with speed. And I ran back to my room. And when I got into my room, I found a ton of people hiding in my room for shelter, a ton of people that I don't know, men, women, children, entire family, single people, dating people. They had all piled up in my room. And then I slammed my door and I saw that on my door was a hole, a good sized hole that had been eaten into the door. And the Lord let me know this is sin. Among those people who entered into my room, somebody had brought in their unrepentant lifestyle, their little secret fetishes that they had. And that thing had eaten a hole in my room's protection. And before I could do anything about it, this thing that came that had now been silver and it had gone through the different buildings in which people were living their lives had eaten so many people appeared at my door and it began to immediately come through the hole in my door. And I began to rebuke that thing with the blood of Jesus. I began to command that thing standing there resisting that evil because there was no time to patch the door or say, let's do repentance, group repentance prayers, whichever one of you did this. I had to stand and deliver in that moment. And this is something that Christians need to understand. You are still playing around with these sugary pastors sitting there and talking about Maranatha as the country is falling apart around you, as they are digging up people's carcasses from 20 years ago, playing games, and not ready to stand and deliver when you have to. By the grace of God, I was able, and that thing had come through. 
and it was looking at me and I was speaking the scripture and praying and it eventually drew back through the hole, just the way it was coming in. It drew back out through that hole and by the mercy of God, that hole sealed up. And I turned to look at these people and shivering, the crying, the grown men sobbing. These are the days that are coming. You may watch and think, yeah, she talks a good game. Well, guess what? The Lord knows each of us by our true nature. This is what I have said since video one. You may say things and say things, but guess what? Your real nature is known upstairs. Do they talk about you with worry? Are they having parent teacher PTAs about you? She's not catching up. I don't think she's going to make it. Or are they discussing you up there and saying, yeah, call this one out. She can be put with this group and she can be trusted with this much. She can be trusted to do this much because she hasn't flaked yet. He hasn't flaked yet. God knows everybody's true nature. So like I said, we can all pretend now everybody's a Christian until the end times kick in. So that was what it was. And God said, um, here to read bits from Isaiah 13. So you, so you can all know, so we can know collectively what is coming. Wail for the day of the Lord is at head at hand. Verse six, it will come as destruction from the almighty and all hands will be limp. Every man's heart will melt and they will be afraid. Pangs, sorrows will take hold of them. They will be in pain as a woman in childbirth. They will be amazed at one another. Their faces will be like flames. And so it is talking here about the strong men of our generation, for we do have strong men. Men that have stood and delivered in many situations. And God is saying that the situations that are coming will cause even these men to bend over as if they are in the third or fifth hour of a severely difficult pregnancy. Men in pain as a woman in childbirth, staring at one another with stunned faces. You can't see giants coming into the earth and just handle it like an NBA championship ring that was lost. No. No. It will bring a kind of difficulty that many people are not prepared for. And then it continues from verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord comes. Cruel. Cruel. Cruelty is losing somebody that you did not want to lose because that person was unprepared to make the kind of changes that preserve life when judgment is in the earth. It is cruel to pass away because you don't want to change. It is cruel because you do not want to honor the Lord in your ways and deeds and in your confession and line up the stuff you say with the private life that you live. A cruel day that brings both wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate. Desolate simply means less people around and completely wrecked. He will destroy its sinners from it. A lot of people don't understand that one of the ways that God will handle the unrepentant sinning population in this earth is simply to leave them in the hands of the things that I describe here. So the idea that God is going to use up his energy to come down and deal with every Peter, Paul, John, and Sally, it's not going to go like that. God will simply hand over the earth for a press process that is called threshing. It is these fallen ones. It is those who love the Anunnaki and the aliens. These creatures are going to reduce the population by themselves without God's involvement. He will simply move back and things will take their natural course as people go to the cyborg factory and say, cut off all my arms and legs and replace them with plutonium, titanium with a nice gold finish. And then after that, whatever happens, happens. So when it says that the land will be desolate and the sinners destroyed from it. It is not every single passing away that will be directly the hand of God. No, many of these things will be carried out simply as the natural process that God says by the things people love, they shall be destroyed. Verse 10, for the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth and the moon will not cause its light to shine. And there indeed is the darkness. You can find out more about that same darkness in Amos 
I think there's a prophecy with about 10 or 15 verses talking about the darkness where in Amos, God says, I will make the sun go down of a clear day. This means that in the middle of the afternoon, 3 p.m., maybe at a bright and even noon time, you suddenly see the sun sinking and the sun is done for a period. In Egypt, it was three days, but you never know if it is going to be longer. So the earth will go dark. The sun will fail. The moon will not give her light. There will be darkness upon this earth. And by this, men will know that when I give them something to steward, something to keep, something to look after, they are supposed to do it with wisdom. And they are supposed to do it with humility because they are supposed to know that I am going to appear at the end of it all and demand an account for how they took care of it. The thing that God gave us to steward, the thing that God gave us to keep, is two things, this world, ourselves, and each other. This world, ourselves, and each other. We have done a terrible job with both. Darkness will swallow this earth. A man will not be able to see his own hand in front of his face, exactly as it was in the days of Egypt. My plagues will rain on the nations. Hail, fire, brimstone mingled with hail and blood. You will see my majesty. You will observe my power. You will know I am he who says, thus saith the Lord. And the first verse is this. And then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, stretch out your hand towards heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which can even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Exodus 10 and verse 21 to 23. And the other scripture that the Lord gave me to read here on camera um, before I started, he said, tell my children that they will and should stay in their dwellings, but the true children of God will have light. And the scripture is this. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 2. And God says that true Christians will have light in their dwelling. And he also said to tell you all these multiple channels and followings and belief systems that you're going with and they're telling you, oh no, you need to burn a blessed candle. No, it needs to be a green candle with red stripes. No, you need to board over your windows and make sure. Do you think that the things that are coming through the tears in the portals and dimensions, they have a problem with breaking through wood? They have a problem with breaking through whatever it is that these false prophetesses are telling you to cover your windows with? Do you understand, people of God, what is truly at stake? Or have we become so mesmerized by a culture that is used to automation, that is used to Walmart, that is used to cell phones, that when people speak of old style, raw biblical things, we cannot process that what we will face are the kind of things that made Noah and his family had to get on that boat in the first place. Noah and his family are not strangers to Nephilim. They lived with them. They lived in an era where women were saying, this is my husband, Galadriel, C-L-L, C-L-L, L-L. A nine foot glowing, beautiful man. And everyone would just look and say, well, at least he's not ugly. Noah lived in that dimension. But the children of God think that the things that are in their Bible, pastors have told them that these immortal truths are not for today. Imagine the world to be judged by fire and the modern shepherds are telling the people who will be judged by fire that the book is not for today. These are biblical truths and God says that the light that the true Christians will have is him, is him. 
So just as I said a few moments ago in those in this video, everyone is a Christian now, but we will all know when your house is pitch black. Candles won't work and the whatever else won't work. And why will it not work? Because the people who are so-called preparing you are liars who are unstudied in the scripture. The Bible says that they could not see one another in Egypt. You could not raise your hand in front of your face. Now, if you have blessed candles and they're working, why would you not be able to see your hand in front of your face? Why would you not be able to simply observe if, if you have the so-called blessed candles in the house, Ave Maria candles, top grade, you know? Why can you not see one another in the house? Because the Bible says that this is spiritual, supernatural, end times darkness, and it doesn't work with human items. For all we know, you try to light that candle and the darkness will actually pinch it out with hands. And all of you in that house will be like, never saw this before. You put the flashlight on and it just dies. Brand new batteries, it just dies. Why? Because you can't go against what is written. No one saw his hand in front of his face. No one could rise from his house. Why? Because he would be stumbling and falling over within his own dwelling. How thick was that darkness? Only the children of Israel had light. What kind of light? We do not know. But it definitely was of the Lord. So why are you preparing with these natural things for what is coming outside of our world? It's pride. That's what it is. So, <clears throat> flies and pestilence will reign on the nations. Plagues, sicknesses will rest on the flesh of humanity. I did not finish my thought. In the final times, when you say that you are a Christian and your house is dark, we will all know that you were not really a Christian after all. You were just one of the Pharisees on the internet correcting grammar and quoting scripture with no actual oil in the lamp. And that humble person that you were always persecuting and saying stuff on their Facebook and telling them, no one wants to hear this. And many of you young people who disrespect your parents that are trying to bring you back to the Lord before the Lord cuts you down before your 30th birthday, that is when you will realize that it was your mother and father who was full of oil, not you. You might actually be that person that causes a hole to open on the family door because of the stuff, the secret lusts, the secret habits, the secret behavior patterns that you have that your family doesn't even know to this day right now that you are carrying, putting the whole family in danger. But may God have mercy on you. Flies and pestilence will reign on the nations, plagues and sicknesses coming on the flesh of humanity. God says that exactly as it was. Now, it says in Egypt that when these boils, I think it was boils, when the boils hit them, that their skin was so sore that they couldn't touch anything. And I bet clothing must have been very painful. So probably everybody was in a little loose robe. And that's just what he said. Your skin will be so tender with boils and the other plagues that will go sweeping through the nations. Skin will become tender when it is exposed to mystery diseases that have never been seen before. And I have said this for many videos that doctors will be going through a learning curve in the years to come. You will start to see them finally admitting on the news. Doctors are unsure what this is. That's because this is coming out of the Bible. They will have no answers. Cream will not help. Flesh will be raw and painful because it is the punishment for the wickedness that has covered the earth. Many will fall to these pestilences and for a time, men will not have any covering except the blood of Jesus, which is able to keep back the presence of plague from the door. Cover yourselves in the blood of Jesus and I will pass over you. So there are a lot of people who don't know what this means. And for their sake, I will only speak of it briefly. Many people believe that once you become born again, the blood of Jesus just jumps on you and does everything, right? The blood of Jesus can be likened to a fully paid ticket that takes care of a meal. So someone comes and tells you 
hey, you know, there's this top restaurant and there's a fully paid ticket there for you to have three course meal. But now when you get to this restaurant, if you do not make an inquiry as to where has this price that has been paid for me, and then they direct you to your table. If you don't pick up the menu and acquaint yourself with what is available to you and order from it, and then the food comes and you consume it, you are saying that all the process of accessing what has been given to you, just because it's provided, it means you have it. You do not have it. You need to take possession of it and apply it. So a physical picture of this was everybody being told, here's the sacrifice lamb. Every household sacrificed the lamb. Did they sacrifice the lamb and they let the lamb's blood run into a bowl and say the lamb has paid, the lamb was slain, the blood is there. Is that what, is that what the instruction was? Let the blood be there and then don't actively use it. They took it put it on hyssop leaves, put it at the top of the door and at the sides. This is a literal picture of your job to pray the blood of Jesus with all the conviction that you've had over yourself, those children, that man, that woman, the boundary of the home, every single thing that pertains to you. You don't use it. It's available. That doesn't mean it's going to automatically work. So praise God. The scripture for the boils is this. Moses was told to take dust and throw it up. Here's just the part. It says, throw it up and it will become a fine dust over all the land of Egypt and become boils that break out in sores upon man and beast throughout all the land of Egypt. Exodus 9, 9. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt and with tumors and scabs and itch of which you cannot be healed. Deuteronomy 28 and 27. The Lord is telling me that a lot of people have been driven, driven off of their property. This is what the Father is telling me right now. He's saying, Celestia, a lot of these people, they've been driven off of their property. And the property that he's talking about is your spiritual inheritance. There are a lot of people. There is a ton of stuff that is given to us freely in the word of God. But because many people are a multitude of chefs. Now, we all know when you make a meal, you stand in front of the stove and you alone cook that meal. You decide the salt, the pepper, and whatever else, the ingredients, and you cook that meal to taste. But this is a church that craves acceptance. Many of you, you hear this, you may be offended. I don't crave acceptance. I'm an individual. There are so many people. You want to believe a certain way. The Lord is calling you deeper into certain things, but you can't move. You are stuck because you need your grandma to come with you and you need your mother to accept that this is the true way to worship God. There are so many of you watching over the Christianity of other people. He's not doing it right. And it's just so boring. And this is why you can't follow God. You are like Mrs. Lot brought back to life. Jesus is ahead. He's saying, come higher up the mountain with me. And you are looking back, looking back, looking back. And God says that there is a ton of people who are driven off of their land, their property, things that he has given them in the spirit. They do not possess it because when they are in the process of possessing it, learning it, applying it, Satan will always send someone to say, that's not the way to do it. You don't need to do all that. It doesn't take all that. Jesus did it all. And just like that, that's all it takes to rob you. It's just some random person. And I do mean random, even it is your blood relative. Just come and move the lips and speak words that ensnare and deceive you. And then you become completely unsettled in your faith. No conviction. This is what he's telling me. No conviction. When you have conviction, when a woman gives birth to a child and she sees her child for even 10 minutes before they take that baby away. Do you think you can bring some other child and tell her this is your baby? That woman is burning with conviction with all those tubes attached to her. She's going to march up in that nursery and identify her baby by smell, touch, everything. She doesn't even need that bracelet. The church is not like that. No conviction. The church is being raised by Facebook posts and podcasts a thousand cooks in the kitchen. This person said this and this person said that. What did the Holy Spirit say? He can't speak. 
There's a thousand voices in your ears. He can't get a word in. He can't say a thing. Driven. I'm seeing someone just going, go, go. Many people are shooed away from practical Christianity because other people out there, these are deceivers in the midst, active tares. Some of the tares do not even know that they are tares. They really see themselves as well-meaning Christians who are just here to help you tighten up your buttons and get your tie right, and they're just going to tie you up in knots and rob you of faith that works. No conviction. And why is there no conviction? Because you don't read this book for yourself and you don't know what it says. And you are always in the comments of a million videos asking people, how am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to do that? Here is a groundbreaking thought. If you buy a Bible that you can understand, a Bible whereby if the KJV is hard, get an NKJV. If the NKJV is hard, just jump into the NIV and start reading. If you actually read the book, it will tell you without fail or mistake how to do everything. This will set somebody free. This will let you know that you don't have to listen to a thousand voices in the wind. We are in times that are way too dangerous for us to be branching out. It's just a thought. Praise the God. So God says that the blood will be a token for you upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. This is Exodus 12 and 13. He went on to say that there will be swarms of flies landing in various countries that spoil everything. Flies swarming over the earth, spoiling men's goods. And he says flies spoil everything they touch because they are agents of decay that accelerate stink and rot in things. Swarms of flies will land in entire countries and leave the people at their wits ends what to do about it. But he said it is on account of their sin. So I will allow the spoiler to spoil them. On account of their wickedness, I will let flies corrupt them. He then spoke about locusts. Locusts have great jaws. They consume a lot. Crops will be destroyed, land consumed, and whole acres of trees will fall into their mechanical job, jaws. I will eat up your produce. I will consume your excess. I will take away what you produce and leave you holding nothing because you nations defy me, who is the eternal God. The plagues will come back. Darkness, hail, bloody water, the death of the firstborn. If the heir dies, the legacy is destroyed. This is the Lord speaking. This part of the prophecy is in capital letters and red. If the heir dies, the legacy is distorted. If the heir dies, tell me, what will you do? If the foundation is cut off, O nations, what shall you do? The firstborn will fall. And the Lord has been speaking for this for years. That in the firstborn, there is a lot of God's hope. We don't make a big deal of it right now. We just tend to give the firstborn a lot of a lot of responsibility. Look after your brothers and sisters, and you're the biggest one, Connor, and I expected more from you. But the respect that goes with this firstborn place, just because modern society has lost so much honor for everything, they think that God is the same. God says the firstborn is the heir. The firstborn is the proof that the father is fertile. The firstborn is the proof that the mother can bear children. The firstborn is extremely important. He is the legacy older. And God says, if that person is cut out of the family as a sign of judgment, the foundation has been destroyed. And what will you do? He says the firstborn will die and the child of promise will perish. And this is solely because that person will not stop sinning. I will reap the earth of her first fruits and the wailing will be great because the spirit of destruction and the angel of death that sweeps over the nations will be allowed to take their portion. Behold, a pale horse and the one who sat upon it was death and with him was Hades. 
and they had power to kill with death, famine, and pestilence. And so we must keep in mind that God never judges unjustly. There is no unjust judgment from the Lord. He is too perfect. He is too absolute. He has all knowledge about everything. And so when God is speaking about the taking away of people's first child, or even, and I've spent many years always pondering over what it means for the firstborn to be taken away. Imagine a man who is a firstborn falling in love with a woman who is a firstborn, and then they bring their firstborn child into the world. Do you know the devastation of what happened that night in Egypt? Has anyone ever taught you this in depth? Do you know what it is to have a cloud, a sickle reaping over a nation? And sometimes in a house, a woman had lost her husband who was a firstborn and her first child and only she and the other little ones remained. Or a man who was a secondborn had lost his wife and their first child and maybe this man was now a single man by force. And what of a house where a husband was the firstborn and the wife was a firstborn and they had one infant? In that house, there would be no wailing because no one would be alive that morning. This is how serious this final plague was. This is why Pharaoh, who had not bowed to nine plagues, let go. Because this plague was a checkmate move that broke the back of Egypt. It depopulated them in an instant And it brought the kind of misery and devastation that breaks anyone's will, even Pharaoh's will. And he told Moses, out of my presence, go. And every single one of you go. It is a will-destroying judgment. And this is not the kind of thing that God traffics in. So when God is saying he's bringing this back, Before you can say, oh, how wicked, and why would he do this, and why would he say this, look at it deeper and ask yourself, I wonder what kind of sin is out there that I don't know about. I wonder what's really going on on this earth that CNN isn't telling me about. That's what we should be doing. God says the time of mankind is over. We are now entering judgment years. We are in judgment years. And he says scripture is being fulfilled and he's putting all things in order. Take heed to yourself. The hour is late. Clean your garments. Check your life. Purify your hands. Prepare to meet your God. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to know wisdom, to love truth, to show mercy, and to separate yourself from the ever-corrupting darkness of sin. If you want to live, repent of the sin in your life. Walk holy, blameless before me. Otherwise, prepare to take part in the reign of judgments that will be sweeping the earth in the final times. For the nations, not just America, all nations, will be repaid in full for the weight of sin that they have done. And just as I was saying, the Lord says plagues will appear everywhere, but it is a sure fact that we will see these plagues here in the United States. And the presence of plagues, God says, are a clear separation of believers from unbelievers. Just as Israel was clearly set apart from Egypt with each plague that fell, the plagues will distinguish between the true church, the lying church, the fake church, the lukewarm church, and those who are open unbelievers, as well as this final group, who are the true children of God. So it's definitely under the impetus of the Holy Spirit that I spoke in the beginning, saying everyone is saved now. Everyone has a little fish sticker. Everyone has the picture and the little Bible verse on their social media. We will be sifted in ways. You say you're a Christian, and then you're walking around, and you have these plagues and boils on your face. Who are you going to be fooling in those days? when we see the judgment plagues on you, and yet you've been sitting in the same Bible study with us, who are you going to fool? We will know that it is God exposing you for those secret addictions that we couldn't see at the church service, but God was watching you and God was calling you away, calling you away, you would not hear. And now when the separators come, the separators are going to do a job. I want to ask you truly believers with respect, When these things come to pass, are you going to write? Are you going to scribble on the plague of darkness in the darkness comment section? 
Will you be cooking with your mouse and saying things under the plague of the firstborn? Those days will be gone. Those days will be gone. The days of unbelief, the days of the Pharisee church that always has something to say, gone. We will be in the time of the threshing of tares one side, wheat one side. And I say to you what God is always telling me, the final sound at the end of all things is silence. No more opinions, no more debate, no more. I just want to tell you this in love, but those days will be gone. The plagues, the judgments, they will make it clear as day. Who really knew God? Who really knew how to pray? Who was really storing up oil in the tough times? Who had an empty lamp and is now stuck in the wind? So the best thing that we can do, we show God love, walking in purity, seeking his grace, excuse me, please, to live a holy life. There's an entire prophetic, prophetic video called, hmm, I think it, it's righteousness is its own reward. I will definitely link that one in the comments. It is a good read. The Lord shared his heart. He showed that righteousness is not only faith in God because it says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Righteousness is not just faith in God. Righteousness is this covering that you receive when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. He cleans you up and shields you with something. The problem is that like children, we rarely stay clean. Anger, outbursts, wrath, all sorts of things. Fornication, masturbation, lust, porn, rage, so many things. Dirty this. And it now takes constant repentance and asking to be cleansed with the blood of Jesus Christ to restore us to that place of obedience and holiness with God. No obedience. I spoke of Abraham in the beginning. Rewind, go back, listen to that part. No holiness. How can you walk with God? Bible says, how can two walk unless they be agreed? How can you be living like the devil and claiming that you are a Christian? Who are you misleading? The darkness will tell us who you are. When your house is not lit up, we will know. When your skin is all broken out to 16 different shades of boils, we will be quiet out of sympathy, but we will know. So, Jesus, <laughs> what a good God. So thank you for being with me. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. The Lord bless you. As I'm working through this prophecy, may he supply strength so that I can finish them all within the time allotted. God bless you, and until I see you again, goodbye.